A little bit of frost this morning. There's bed last night. Very uneven. <laughs> oh, there's a fish on my lure. Fish on my lure. Fish on my lure. Fish on my lure. Oh, oh. Typical outfit. Squirrel 79. Medium rod. Bait caster. It's a fish. Yeah, you. Well, good morning, everyone. Look where I am. I don't know if you recognise this lake. I don't think I've done. I haven't done a bass video here. I haven't done a YouTube video here for ooh five, six years maybe, but. Uh, we are at Lake Bunduma. So we're near Proston, sort of, I still I guess it's still sort of southeast Queensland, a little bit further north. Lockdown ended a couple of days ago and I had a little window of time. So I literally got here at 11 o'clock last night and uh, set up the swag. Sun's about to rise soon and I am wrecked. I'm so tired. Only here for one day, but I didn't want to. Um, I didn't want to have to drive here this morning and be super tired. Well, I thought I'd be more rested by driving here last night, but 11 o'clock, a bit of a broken sleep, and uh, but I'm here and it's beautiful, magic condition. So I'll get the rig in the water and uh, we'll get after it. I ne have never been here when the dam's been this low. So it'll be interesting. A little bit of frost this morning. There's bed last night. Very uneven. <laughs> the easiest way to tie an FG knot. Not tight. <clears throat> Couple of half hitches to finish, opposite sides. A double for the last one. Pull it tight. Done. Big one. Oh, no, little ones. Go to Bunjuma color. Yeah. So I used to fish a lot of jerk baits to the bank in here. Typical outfit: Squirrel 79, medium rod, bait caster. I think that's 20 pound braid, 16 pound leader. Typical for been doing for me. That's my uh, that's my grand final winning colour for in here. So, but I haven't been here for forever. The lake's lower than I have ever seen it ever. Um, a lot of things don't really change though. So I mean, when I was catching my jerk baits, I wasn't the first one to catch my jerk baits in here. They've been doing it for a long time, and it was a long time ago. So it should still be a thing. So I'll start with that first off, just because. I don't really know where to look, but as you can see, I have the entire lake to myself right now. With the jerk base to the banks, typical banks were A, either really steep rocky cliffs like this one that I'm going up to at the moment, or uh, like nice weed beds on tapered banks. So I'm going to start with these rocky ones because I don't even know if there's any weed bed in here, and I already broke my cardinal rule. I turned up to the lake without a map of the lake, so I have no real idea where the flats are now, where the contours are, so we'll start on a few rock walls and see what we can't pick off.
it's little it's a fish yeah you it's tiny <laughs> he's only just nipped it too just like literally licked it so I guess some things don't change it's a technique relatively simple you want to throw as close as you can to that edge and hard to explain but it needs to be real sharp snaps which is like flick the water I guess with your line but gentle snap so you're not really you're not moving your lure much but your lure is very erratic in the position that it's in it's very triggering response from the fish normally they choke it and run off but that guy just snitched the tail so he could be a lying fish, but we will play along for a bit more and just see. I've literally had five casts from there to there. <laughs> so that's fun. Little as it is, fun. Played around with him for a bit. Other lures back to a jerk bait, and he's tiny, but full, full cheek swipe job that time. He's fully. Well, he's actually hit it head first. Tried to eat it. <laughs> nice one, buddy. Change his jerk bait. He's uh sinking a tad well that one ain't gonna work <laughs> um, try try this one he looks out there small hooks no. try this one Color I've never used before. I'll leave you out. You might need a run. Leave you out as well. So I like the look at you. Fish on my lure, fish on my lure, fish on my lure, fish on my lure, oh, oh. Backed off. 
You might have to look. But chickened off. Hit that twice. Ooh, he's a little bit better. Yellow belly. Yep. Big old yellow. Hit that twice. <laughs> Sneaky little chub. First, yellow belly, big squirrel, 80 mil lure. He's probably, he'd be 50 centimeters long, but I've caught a lot of yellow belly on jerk baits over the years. Surprising because you pick him as being like a slow sort of feeder or whatever, but they love a good jerk bait, that's for sure. So you can look back along that bank that I just fished and think that, or easily be mistaken that they were uh, like random fish. They're not really random where I caught them. So I caught one at the very beginning, which had a little bit more broken rock and a different taper. And that whole solid uh, steeper edge, nothing. So then I caught another one as I come up a bit further along that bank and it changed back again. It went from that real steep to a little bit more rubbly broken rock. Then a little bit further along, missed one, caught a yellow belly, missed another one, right where that edge, uh, doesn't really look like it ended, but a few casts after that I caught a bunch of weeds. Obviously the taper under the water ends. So key things I guess to look at when you're fishing like different banks and stuff like that, don't just fish the entire bank. Um, Yes, some banks may be okay, especially like a weed bed scenario or something like that. But even in a weed bed scenario, you waypoint where you're catching them, they won't be the whole way along. You're not going to catch one, well, I don't want to say this, because I have caught them all the way along. But typically, there'll be some sort of difference on that bank where that's where the fish are holding up. So that's where they feed or that's where they hide. Um, I was really, really surprised with that perfect point that I couldn't catch one where those shags and stuff were sitting but in saying that when I got to fish around it more a lot shallower had weed all around it which I'm not saying weed is is wrong but um, for what I'm trying to do on rock walls weed is no good um, if you're fishing a sanded bank and a weed bank for example you're actually fishing that weed edge that's right but when you're fishing rock walls and there's weed involved um, and it changes that whole dynamic. They're not really up in the rocks where I'm trying to catch them and they may not even necessarily be on that weed. Um, so that's a little bit disappointing because I really like the look of that bank. But so when you're going along one of those banks, um, just pay attention. You can have a waypoint where you catch those fish. I often do that. I didn't do that today because they're only small. Um, if you waypoint the fish, you can work out a pattern. Otherwise, just have a quick glance at the bank uh, if I'm practicing for a tournament, I'll even take a photo of the bank right where I caught the fish and a photo of the condition. So as you can tell today, it's like ridiculous. Glass out, amazing, which does not help. Um, 
Another thing to think about when jerk baiting for bass is easiest way to describe it is I like to try and match the weather, I guess, with my the way I twitch the lure. So I'll glass out day like today. I'm not moving that lure very much. I'm moving it sharply, like I said, but minimal distance. Whereas if it was really windy and horrible conditions, I could punch along a bank faster and it also ripped that jerk out really, really hard and more erratic. I do like a bit of breeze on the surface as well. As you can imagine, right now light penetration is at all time max. Um, you get that little bit of breeze and it just ripples that surface, which then the reflection, especially on such a bright colored jerk weight like I've been using, that reflection is also like rippled and and broken up so it looks a lot more natural a lot more appealing it's also harder for them to actually see exactly what that is i guess so i find if you just get a little bit of ripple it's a lot better or um even low light but right now we're at full sun glass out so even though water isn't that dirty i'm fishing a big jerk bait bright colors as you can see i like this one but he floated, so he got the sack. This one I didn't get to try yet, I don't think. And that's the color that caught the last couple. So the one I started with, which I really liked, I noticed on the uh, active target it was sinking, so you don't really want to sink. You want it to sit in their face, and you also know exactly what depth it is. The other reason I use the Squirrel 79s, they're a double deep squirrel, and I like to be fairly deep down to that six plus feet um almost straight away whereas if you're on a 67 which is a smaller profile you just won't get to that depth and as you can tell from the colors and the sizes i'm not after a natural presentation i'm after reaction response from these guys so it's all about triggering them it's pretty cool though on the active target to watch them not cool frustrating to uh watch them like interact with the lure. I did see a couple follow it and then um, they'd sit right on it on the paws. Dead still, you'd see a fish sitting right on there and you twitch it. And yes, it would spook them, but he would just do a 180 and then come back to it. So I'm assuming that's how you trigger some of them. I've never actually been able to watch, watch them to be able to trigger them. So that was cool. Maybe I can do a little bit more of it this afternoon, but right now I think I'm gonna go play in the deep for a bit. I really intelligently said there was uh, no wind. Now it's blowing its ass off. <laughs> Shouldn't say that. Now it's blowing really strong. And uh, unfortunately, I don't know how, I guess because I was tired and drove all night, I left all my GoPro batteries and everything in the car. So I'm going to run back, grab all them, and then uh, start looking for some deep fish, I think. So it turns out, I didn't leave the GoPro batteries in the car, I left them at home. So I came back out and there was a bit of shade on this bank. First cast I saw a few chase me on the active target and then second cast caught this little fella. He's eating it pretty good so a bit of wind, a bit of shade. I might try and do some screen recording so I can show you guys these things reacting to the jackbait. It's pretty cool. First cast up the ridge off those fish. <laughs> Crazy. I've been sitting next to them for 20 minutes. Can't catch one. First cast. Another pixie bird. It's a little fella. That one. Woo. Well, that feels great. <laughs> Finally, get not much bigger than a jackbait fish, but a lot fatter. So that's cool. That's a start. So, I went back to a color that I smoked them all on in Somerset in one of my other videos where I took one lure. It's a new color, RA60. And I literally gone through, I didn't see them. <laughs> yeah. There's gonna be 15 spoons there. I've caught one on the biggest spoon that I've got, caught one on the smallest spoon I've got. And that was first cast with that RA60 color, so things could be looking up. Uh, 
found a million micro bass. Definitely not what I'm after, but it's super shallow. I'll show you what I stopped on. I screenshot it. See, look at that. It's tight as a little bunch under that bait ball, but obviously didn't get onto him.